forward. Let's continue this. You could talk, brothers and sisters. Let's continue this about the loose fire. You know, about loose fire and in relation to ones like even um, uh, Snoop Doggy Dog's recent, um, I'm not going to be presumptuous and say he's a Rasta or Rastafari, but he went, he rolled Bingy Fellowship with many of the elders in Jamaica, and he's filming a documentary about Bar Marley. Theologically speaking, you know, I think he's off with the reincarnation kind of thing. I could understand feeling, you know, as you feel, you know, one and one or one, one is so so real, Bob Marley, his music, that, you know, it opens up, it opens up your perspective, your awareness, you know, not to mention, you know, the kind of balsam. And that's interesting. Mm. It's interesting because um, we're in the time of what's known as Hudade, Hudade. And, and, and there's a video that we have up there. In fact, um, we didn't get to print it out. Um, this information, but let's just put this information up here for you. Um, we're in like a holy time right now, right? So let's talk about for a moment um, Bob Marley, right? Music, right? Music and um, what's known, what we could call the Ethiopian fast of Lent. For like, it's not Lent really, Lent in that sense, but um, it's, it's the Ethiopian original of what we know as the fast of Lent. And um, we call it Hudade, Hudade, right, to Fasica. Now, Fasica is the Passover. So we have Hudade, which is about 40, um, some add, I think, an extra 10 or so days to it. So it turns out to be like 50 roughly 50 or so days, there's a fasting period, you understand, from Hudade to Fasica. Um, an Orthodox monk by the name of um, Norman Reddington, he did a very interesting um, article and series of, um, of, of scribes, writings on um, Rastafari and, and, and Orthodoxy and Ethiopian uh, we could say Ethiopian and Eastern Orthodoxy, the connections. And in a very profound way, you know, he saw from his study of Rastafari that there, there is a, a mystical, spiritual, and Christ-based connection between the true Rastafari precept and the true Rastafari movement and um, root Christianity. Or, or, or true Christianity, even to the sense of early Christianity. And then he has another article, which is, has something, I think, with this name, Bar Mali, um, Hudade Tafasika. In fact, the video that we have up on our YouTube's um, Ethiopian World Net, the one that's the screensaver up there, is really about that. So we'll, if you haven't seen it, or if you haven't seen it in a while, check it out again. We'll try to arrange... Um, for the, uh, Norman Reddington's article, um, his writing, or the writing that we have of him, to put that in a special section, perhaps a study section, on www.lojsociety.org, one of our main um, outlets and, and websites on, on the Internet, so that um, ones can read it for themselves. Because we were pleasantly um, surprised, though it was not unexpected, you understand, that someone, you know, like, it's not if Rastafari is the truth. It's as Rastafari is the truth. It should not surprise us that ones who are even deeply or who have gone deeply in the system of things won't, by God's grace, by God's grace, find their way or seek their way to the light of Rastafari, to, to Ethiopia, and for us as Ethiopian Hebrews and, and Beta Israel, to the true knowledge of who we are as a people. It's only so long that one can suppress the truth. You understand? One cannot overcome the God of truth, but it's only but so long one can suppress the truth. You know what I'm saying? And the truth is rising up, and ones and ones are seeking, you know, seeking for salvation, especially those who have, who have, have, have partook of, of, of evil out there in the world. You know, and Paul Hawadiya Paulos, Paul, whom his majesty referenced in his Lutheran 
interview, he speaks at he speaks at some length on that and you know this book right here, right? We we pointed out before, but um the gospel, the good news, the gospel of him, um, one of the first books hopefully in a in, in a series that we put out, um, we actually put that interview in here of his majesty and we look at that to be like a primary catechumen, catechism, and it was a question and answers um for ones who are seeking the true light of his majesty and our black Lord and Savior, the true Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, Yesus Christos. I mean, it, it, is, it is very simple, direct, but when you meditate upon it, meditate upon the teaching of his majesty, the words of his imperial majesty, especially these words regarding our faith. This is why this first book, we tried to collect many of the speeches of his majesty, many of the word sounds, as we would say, of his majesty, and put it in one pocket size volume and this is the volume right here in fact if we have an opportunity we try to send even snoop um doggy dog a copy and see if he will be interested you know what i mean just read it read it or not read it we want to make the opportunity available so those out there who can you know get a copy of this maybe to him or reference him to this it, it, it's for rastafari so the light of Ra so one has the opportunity to decide for or against you can send with the facts you know, with the facts. Do the math with the facts. And these are the facts. So in continuing, we just thought we'd put this together right here, Bob Marley's music and um, the Hudade to Fasica, the journey between these two particular times. This is a time of fasting, and this is a time of overcoming. You know, and this is the season. This is the reason for the season. So when we saw his... Uh, I think recent one of Snoop Doggy Dogs or Snoop Dogg or Burhane, if that's what he is known or is calling himself, we don't know that as of yet. We know that's what ones and ones have named him. We don't know whether he's accepted, even in a Rastafari sense or a Nyabingi sense, you know, really an Ethiopian sense, that particular, um, that particular um, name as, as, of, as of yet. But it's interesting because in the video that we saw, I think it was posted roughly around this, this, this particular time that we're in right now, February 2012, you know, heading towards, you know, um, March, you know, heading towards March 2012. And this is the season of, um, of Hudade. And Norman Reddington's, Norman Reddington is the brother who wrote this a particular article on Hudade. So if you put Reddington Hudade or Norman Reddington Hudade and put it in the, the Google search, you probably come across, I think it's the electronic music discography um, page, and then the article is in that page. And it breaks down, I think, seven, if I'm correct, seven particular songs. There are like seven particular songs that Norman Reddington he, he parallels the experience of us as black people, of us as the lost sheep of the Beta Israel, with this particular season, almost like the Israelites going through this darkness and horror and, and old-time pirates and slavery and coming through this wilderness, just like the Israelites, you know, to this time of overcoming, to this time of coming out of this spiritual Egypt, of, of this captivity, which is, which is pointing to the fullness of God's prophecy for us as the once lost but now found Beta Israel or Ethiopian Hebrews. So the Norman Reddington article points to that. So when we saw the vid with um, Snoop, right, um, you listen to some Bob burning the herb and talking about the peace and, and, the, and the, you know, just, just the, the sublime piece of the music and, and saying go out, buy some Bob Marley music, go out and, and listen to Mar Marley and, you know, get this vibe. It's interesting because this is one of the areas we wanted to teach, but, you know, to, to whom more is given, more is required, and, and, and just pray for us that we can do all that the Father would have us do for the glory of his name and his once lost but now found people. But we didn't get an opportunity to get to it, but now we are touching on this particular subject matter, the connection bet between Bob Marley's music, you understand, and this season, this holy Christian and, and Ethiopian 
Christian Orthodox season known as Hudade in the West, in the Western Roman Catholic, it's called, um, it's called the Lent season that leads up to what falsely is called Easter, but what we call Fasica and the OJs, the other Jews, they call it Pesach, Pesach. So we say Fasica, and it's said to mean Passover. So let's just put this up here so you can take this down. So this is a season of, of, of fasting, what's known as the Great Fast, actually. And this is a season of Mosei Passover, but more correctly, right, it will be the cross over. This is where the Israelites, basically all this is connected right here with the theme of Exodus. And from Bob Marley and the Wailers song, we know that Exodus is the movement of Jah's people. You understand? And who are Jah's people? The once lost but now found Beta Israel. And this is I and I. You know, I and I who haven't, haven't known who we are, but then we come to that knowledge and we either choose it or refuse it. The choice is still ours. The Almighty is not going to snap his finger and do all that nonsense. He's going to allow you to make a decision. You understand? And then, then you know, he is either for you, Yovas, or because you've decided against him, you are against him, and he is against you. And you know what? There's no way out then. You know, that's, that's, that's a done deal. You may have the pleasure of the world for a moment, you know, but that's it. You know, um, so we have the fast. So this is the fasting season. So the Norman Reddington article, I think, gives a, a good outline to take. I think most of the songs are on the Legend album, if I'm, if I'm correct with that. Most of these songs are on the Legend album. And how to listen to these songs while we go through this season, which is a buildup to the Exodus season or the Passover season. And in Hebrew, these are known as Mo Moedim. They're called Moed, these holy days, seven high holy days are known as Moedim. Some interpret that as being the rehearsal. In other words, this is the rehearsal. This is the rehearsal, you know, because as we rehearse, as we get in this spiritual state of mind, it helps us to come out of Babylon to dislodge, you understand, and to download spiritual power as well as spiritual authority. And we know the teaching of the King of Kings says that spiritual power, you understand, that is what we need to really connect. And Christ is also necessary. And the true teaching of the King of Kings and his Christ is the key for we. So just to sum up on this particular point about all the fire burning, you know, all the loose fire that's out there, you know, because some maladjusted rosters, you know, I know you're, you're going to say, well, he done this and he done that, so forth and so on. And y'all will think, some of y'all, some of y'all who think this way will think, well, there's no hope for it for anybody like a Snoop. You know, he's been in the world. He's, he's done this and that. Uh, you fool. You fool. You know what I'm saying? We don't know whether Snoop will, will receive the hand that is stretched out to him. You understand? But that's his choice. Before you give one a choice, you already burn them out. And then if they were about to come, but you burn them out, you turn them away. What does Christ say? Christ says, whoa, whoa, yo, whoa, yo, lacho in them heart. Or whoa, yo, lacho. You understand? Whoa, yo, lacho. Whoa to you. Whoa, yo, lacho. You understand? Whoa to you. You know, if you do such, if you turn away a little one and a little one as a youngin. One who doesn't even, you know what I mean, one who doesn't even know. You must accept him as a little one, you understand, even as the son of man, even as Lij Teferi, a potential, in other words, Lij Teferi. You know, we don't reincarnate his majesty, you know, but in the spirit of his majesty, in the spirit of Christ, it may be from a Bob Marley record, you understand, you sitting down, they're passing the law, you know, and you mm, take a puff. And, and your spirit is receptive. It receives it. Your whole life changed, man. You know, come on. Your whole life changed. Many of us, uh, my, I and I brethren, you know, one brother in touch me with this. He talked about what Haile Selassie had saved him from. We just was, I think, in the backyard and, you know, of his place and some other brethren. And, you know, they were burning. They passed the spliff. And, 
you know, he was talking about like how Rastafari is good, man. And, you know, you know, he, he's still struggling for himself and, and his ways, the old man, but he's talking about how Rastafari is a good man, how it saved him from a lot of stuff he was doing out there in the world. You know, like a lot of us was doing a lot of stuff that we're not proud of because we don't even testify to the fact that we was doing these things. You know, and what Hala Selassie saved I and I from, if you are saved. Mm -hmm. That's the question right there. You know, are you just carrying the dreadlock, smoking the herbs, so forth and so on, and you just the same old, same old? You just, you just have locks and have a different look to you. You understand? And then you want to forbid one who is curious or who is seeking. You understand? Instead of trying, if possible, if they are receptive and willing, trying to put them on the right track and praying, you understand, that this is sincere and true. You know? So you really have to, you have to check that out. But here's what the word says. Let's get back to the testimony right here. Mm -hmm. Here's what the word says. We had Luke chapter 9, and we had let off at, um, let's go back to verse 50, 54, right? And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them even as Eliyahu did, even as Elias, Elijah, Elias did? Right? But he turned. What? <laughs> you know, like, what, nigga? You know, what? And rebuked them. He rebu Christ turned and rebuked them for this.